affordable, rapid, accessible, and reliable diagnostic tests. Big words, big dreams, big hopes that were shattered with Theranos. <laughs> maybe, maybe in the biggest accident in the history of the Silicon Valley. Unfortunately, Theranos Gate made people skeptical about the feasibility of the quest for better diagnostics. And many reject it now as if it was an idea worth shedding rather than an idea worth spreading. And yet, better diagnostics continues to be the quest, the odyssey of many clinicians and scientists. Here's one lesson we've learned from the bad blood. Theranos tried to disrupt the blood-based industry by minimizing the volume, you recognize this gesture, the volume of the blood sample, <laughs> suggesting this is one step towards less invasive, less painful diagnostic, diagnostic tests. But is there another body fluid that, like blood, holds the clinical relevant information, but unlike blood, can be drawn at high, high volumes? After 100 years of blood-based tests, isn't it time to stop the bloodshed? <laughs> Winston Churchill promised the British people during the Second World War nothing but blood, tears, and sweat. So let's talk about these two alternatives for blood, tears, and sweat. The challenge is that we don't cry or perspire without a limit or at least not on demand. And even another body fluid already in use, urine, cannot be collected at will. Try to collect a urine sample from your kid when the nurse is waiting in the other room. <laughs> so, if Churchill doesn't have the answer, sorry, Churchill, <laughs> what is the alternative for blood? The answer is on the tip of your tongue, saliva. Saliva is readily available. We salivate up to one-third of a gallon per day. That can be collected non-invasively and painlessly over and over and over again in short time intervals, opening the door for continuous monitoring. It eliminates the use of disposables like needles, and the need for phlebotomy, so we can take the test at home. And importantly, saliva mirrors the content of the blood, or in other words, a huge portion of the biomolecules, our biomolecules, exist in both body fluids, from proteins to hormones to metabolites to DNA. Clinical trials conducted over the last three decades, have demonstrated that hundreds of different medical conditions can be detected in saliva based on the very same biomolecules currently tested in blood. Let's say I convince you that saliva can be collected non-invasively at high volumes and that it holds the clinical relevant information. But how will saliva tests improve outcomes for the patient? compared to existing blood tests. So blood tests are usually scheduled months or even years apart. And for this reason, they have low chance of detecting rapid changes in our body, while frequent testing have better chances to do so because they then lead to earlier and better understanding of these processes. In a similar manner that our ability to understand context and, and meaning is improved based on videotaping rather than on snapshotting. And so better and early understanding of these processes can help us shift the focus from diagnosing and treating to predicting and preventing. This is better understood through specific examples. So let's take an example that we all know, diabetes. The levels of glucose, the 
objective indicator of diabetes were measured in blood and in saliva in healthy individuals and in diabetes mellitus type 2, and they are correlated and well understood. There are 30 million Americans with diabetes, and another 84 million with prediabetes. Not all those with prediabetes end up with diabetes. In fact, changing lifestyle can either prevent or delay the onset of diabetes. However, people with prediabetes don't test themselves as often as people with diabetes, but they might do so if they can take the test at home, non-invasively, and get the clinical grade information. Right now, there is no FDA-approved, non-invasive glucose tracker, and the need for one is clear. Think about the following scenario. You're driving down the street, and you're speeding. Don't take it personally. Might happen to you, might not. There is no police around, but an unmanned speed detector shows you that you're speeding. Most likely, you will slow down because in the moment feedback works. Now let's go to our pre-diabetic patient who wakes up in the morning to use a smart toothbrush that monitors the salivary levels of glucose seamlessly. With this simple morning routine that we all know, without any behavioral change, the patient can establish the personalized baseline, which accounts for the user's gender, ethnicity, age, etc., etc. And then, upon measurements of deviations, from this baseline, the personalized baseline, the user can get feedback how changes in lifestyle can help slow down the progress of the disease, which we see here in the blue dash curve, something which is not possible without continuous monitoring, which is presented, represented here by the continuous curve. I'm a chemist by training. And as a chemist, I've, I've always been inspired by the periodic table of elements for the elegant way it sorts data and presents it by similarities of properties. Once a chemist, probably always a chemist, I, just like the periodic table, I have collated salivary biomarkers of diseases and disorders and physiological conditions from those 30 years of clinical trials, and I organize them in a new table, a periodic table that we call the periodic table of salivary diagnostics, where each square is a potential test represented by a two-letter acronym. Each color-coded column is a family of diseases that either share an origin or overlapping biomarkers, and for the hidden nerds in the audience, who might be there, <laughs> yes, prevalence does increase moving down a column. Tests in this table can be clustered into three categories. Chronic conditions, acute conditions, and wellness metrics. Under chronic conditions, we can find examples like autoimmune diseases and age-related diseases, and metabolic diseases like diabetes that we've mentioned. Let's take cardiovascular diseases, here colored in blue. We lose 600,000 Americans every year to cardiovascular diseases. Imagine how many lives we can save, but non-invasive daily tracking. And then we have acute conditions like infectious diseases and parasitic diseases and sexually transmitted diseases. Let's take one square, DG, on the left, three from the top. DG is dengue. There are 400 million cases of dengue every year, and one-fourth 
of the population of this planet is exposed to dinghy. Salivary biomarkers of dinghy appear five days, up to five days before they appear in blood. This is time to quarantine, time to treat, precious time in infectious diseases. And last but not least are the wellness metrics, which today are assessed by so many wearables around us, but we can do better because we can provide clinical grade information for sleep, for stress, for nutrition, for overtraining, and many more. Tests in this table are only a subset of the potential portfolio of saliva tests, but they offer an exciting vision a roadmap for the, those who wish to pursue salivary diagnostics. After 30 years of research, of clinical trials, the use of saliva as a diagnostic fluid has become a huge success story in research. However, it has not been integrated yet into the clinical practice and workflow and certainly not into a smart toothbrush. So technology is not ready yet. You cannot go online and buy it in Amazon. But you can help realizing the vision today. And so I'd like to ask you to do two things. One, think how this underappreciated source of clinical grade information goes down the drain with every morning's tooth brushing. <laughs> Two, ask your primary care physician for a saliva test instead of a blood test in your next appointment. The doctor will tell you, of course, that the alternative does not exist, but you should tell your doctor that you've learned that it's possible. <laughs> this should create an awareness for the alternative. This should trigger a conversation inside the medical community. This should create a demand for better diagnostics, which will be affordable, accessible, rapid, and reliable. And what if the doctor tells you that this is another Theranos-like idea? Here is one response to memorize. While there is bad blood, there is never bad saliva. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs>